Hey folks, today I'd like to give you an introduction to our new animation timeline and function curve editor. With these tools we have the ability to animate transforms and prims, prim properties and token animations such as visibility or focal length properties. So to get started, down here in the lower right hand corner uh, you'll see the key all and the auto key button. So with a prim selected, if you turn on auto key, you'll see that it is yellow. This is to indicate that the selected object has no curves. Uh, the user must create the first key. There are several methods in the UI to setting keys and we'll start with the most direct method. Clicking on the green icon will key all transforms and visibility on the object you have selected. You can also use the hotkey Alt S to key all. Once you've created your first key, you'll see that the auto key button is now red. This indicates that auto key is now active on the selected prim. Any transform or visibility channels that are updated from this point will be automatically keyed. In addition to being able to set keys from the timeline, you can also have more explicit control over what channels you want to key in the property panel. So if we go here, we give this a value 400, we can right click and set key, and that will set a key on that axis only. If you want to create a key on the entire channel, you can right click over here and set key. So once you have some keyframes created, you can select and move the keys on the timeline to adjust the timing of your animation. Uh, to do that, holding the shift modifier, left click on the selected key, and that will highlight the key. You can then grab this selected area and move the key anywhere on the timeline. Similarly, if you want to select a group of keys, you hold down shift, click, and drag, that will create the selection range and then you can move all of the keys found within that range. And then to deselect that area just click anywhere on the timeline. Now that we have some keys set up in the timeline we can make further refinements to our animation in the curve editor. Animation curves allow us to control the timing of the animation as it transitions in between keyframes. To navigate in the graph, use the middle mouse button to pan around and use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And then over here we have the frame all key. Clicking this will frame all of the curves so that they are visible when in the graph. And then you can select a key or a group of keys and click frame selected and that will display the curves that you have selected. Then if you go over here to the timeline we can trim the duration of our scene to the desired length. So let's make this 24 so we can make a clean cycle. So the first thing I want to do here is copy some keys so we can make a clean cycle. So with the key selected, go up here, click the copy key, and then move to the frame you want to duplicate your key and click paste. And now I will do that again for the first and last key. And we'll set those up to make sure that they are the same. So we copy this and we go to our last frame and we click paste and we frame all. So next thing I want to do is fix up my scales here. So we go to this frame And we can set this up quickly here. Now that we have all of our keys timed out, we can adjust the tangents of the keys to control the timing of the curve as the object passes in between the keyframes. 
So as you can see right now, this is pretty soft. It doesn't really look like a bouncing ball. So we want to change this curve so the ball has more weight. And we can do that by adjusting the tangent on the key. So the uh, controls for the tangents are up here. We have weighted and non-weighted. So a non-weighted key is the same length on either side and does not change the distance from the key. And a weighted tangent, you can uh, move the tangent as far away from the key as you want and define the curve in that way. And then over here we have broken and unbroken. An unbroken key, the two sides move together. And if we break the key, it gives us independent control over each side of the curve. So in the case of the bouncing ball, we want to make the curve look like this. And this will have the ball accelerate as it falls until it hits the ground. And then we want to do the same over here. And change this to broken. And we want the ball to accelerate quickly as it leaves the ground, as it leaves the ground and uh, slow down at the top of its curve. So now with that simple adjustment, the ball has a lot more weight. In addition to animating transforms, you can also animate token attributes in the property panel. So go over to your property panel and we'll animate the visibility on the ball. Scroll down until you find the visibility channel. Go to the frame where you want to turn your object off, set to invisible, and then you can right click and set key. So if you go over and take a look at the curve, you'll see that this uses a stepped curve. So a stepped curve will maintain the value of the key until the next key. That about wraps up our introduction to Create's new animation tools. We'll be back with more animation features and workflow tutorials very soon. Thank you.